The temperature of your bed can make or break your sleep. And thankfully we have devices that let us choose exactly what temperature we want our mattresses to be throughout the night. Over the last four years, I've been using bed cooling systems such as 8 Sleep's Pod Pro 2 Cover and Chilly Sleep, now Sleep Me's, Uller and Doc Pro. And when 8 Sleep released the Pod Pro 3 earlier this year, I wanted to know how is it different than the Pod Pro 2? Is it worth the upgrade? And how does it compare to the Doc Pro, which was also released earlier this year? This video isn't sponsored, but 8 Sleep did send me their Pod 3 to test out, which I'm incredibly grateful for. But all of these opinions are my own, both the positive and the negative. So let's first break down the differences between the Pod 2 and the Pod 3. Both have the same setup process. You put the encasement on the bed followed by the active grid, zip it up and cinch it into place. It's physically a lot of work, especially if you're setting the eight sleep up by yourself. But the good news is that it is super secure on the bed. That thing is not going anywhere. Once you get everything on the bed, you gotta connect the water hoses to the hub and connect the hub to your Wi-Fi. And you do need Wi-Fi to be able to use the eight sleep device. And this leads me to my first noticeable difference between the Pod 2 and the Pod 3. The Pod 3 has better Wi-Fi capabilities, so I'm able to set up the device anywhere in my house. Whereas with the Pod 2, I have to be a little closer to the router. And I've talked to some people who have had some issues connecting their Pod 2 to their Wi-Fi. But I think if you live in a small apartment, for example, you're probably not gonna have any issues. But I think this all depends on the strength of your Wi-Fi signal. For both devices, you still go through a priming phase, which takes about an hour and a half. And make sure you have hydrogen peroxide and distilled water on hand for this setup. And for maintenance, but we'll talk about that later. One thing I really like about the 8 Sleep is that you only need one device per bed, even if you have two people sleeping on the bed. But I briefly want to mention an issue that I ran into that I don't necessarily think others will run into, but while I've been testing the Pod 3, it has detracted a little bit from the overall experience. When I initially set up the Pod 2 several months ago, I invited my husband to join the Pod through the app. He got set up and we had no issues. But then when I went to connect to the pod three, it automatically connected my husband as well. And your profile can't be connected to more than one pod at a time. I think this was a bug and the app shouldn't have automatically done that. But long story short, it was pretty frustrating getting my husband disconnected from the pod three and reconnected to the pod two. Their tech support was super helpful. They were very responsive. But as someone who's done a fair amount of testing and QA in their day job, I just see a lot of opportunities for the app to be improved. Moving on, let's talk about comfort. Both the Pod 2 and Pod 3 make the bed feel a little firmer, I think mainly because everything is cinched in. But for my personal sleep preferences, this isn't necessarily a bad thing and I don't really notice it. Now, I always thought the active grid for the Pod 2 was really comfortable, but then I experienced the Pod 3 and I'm like, wow, this is great. I think the active grid with the Pod 3 is a step up. I would say that this is the second significant difference between the two devices, and I'm kind of surprised that this isn't talked about more. The Pod 3 has a little more cushion, and while comfort is very subjective, I would say that the Pod 3 is the winner. The Pod 3's active grid also has more sensors than its predecessor, but this suggests that the tracking capabilities in the Pod 3 are going to be more accurate. But I don't think that these metrics are going to be as accurate as a wearable device. But I think with the data you get, even if it isn't the most accurate, you can start to see some patterns and you can begin to understand what affects your sleep. I should also mention that the CPU in the Pod 3 has a more powerful processor, so you're able to get more information faster. So if you do have something like the subscription, there's this autopilot feature, so it'll change the temperature of the bed as you're sleeping. It'll like measure your sleep and do cool stuff and be like, ah, we need to make the bed cooler. It allows for that capability to be more efficient. With all that said, the big question, is it worth it? It depends. How much do you hate that answer? <laughs> but it's true. If we look at the cost of the covers for a queen size bed, the Pod Pro 2 is gonna run you around 1800 bucks, whereas the Pod Pro 3 is around 2100 bucks. But I'd say if you're getting an eight sleep Pod Pro cover for the first time, if it fits in your budget and you wanna make the investment, go for the three. 
but you know what? The 2 is going to be just fine as well. But if you're thinking about upgrading from the Pod 2 to the Pod 3, it might be worth it if you're struggling with the Wi-Fi connectivity or if you just like to have the latest and greatest thing. But honestly, the Pod Pro 2 is pretty great and you're not going to notice that much of a difference. Now that we've covered the main differences between the Pod 2 and the Pod 3, let's compare the 8 sleep devices to the Dock Pro from Sleep Me. The Dock Pro came out earlier this year and I actually got it as soon as it came out. It's right on this bed, as a matter of fact. I'm going to go through these pretty quickly since I've already covered a lot of this information in a previous video, which I will include in the description and I'll link it up in the cards as well. Now, if only one person is sleeping on the bed, the Dock Pro is easily going to be the cheaper option. But if two people are sleeping on the bed, the prices are actually pretty close. And I know that these are all pretty expensive, but it really is an investment in your sleep quality. And I could go on and on about the importance of sleep, but I will save that for another video. The eight sleep setup is definitely more involved. I mean, with the Dock Pro, you basically just plop it on the bed, connect it to the hub, and you're done. And yeah, you gotta fill it up with water, of course, but you get my point. In my opinion, all of these mattress covers are really comfortable. The 8 Sleep feels a little more firm and it feels like it's part of the bed. The Dock Pro cover isn't as secure on the bed, which is why it's so easy to set up, but there are some people who have found the cover has a tendency to bunch up. Personally, this has not happened to me, but it is worth sharing. All of these devices are quiet, but 8 Sleep absolutely takes the cake for the quietest device. The Pod 2, Pod 3, and the Dock Pro all have very similar temperature ranges. Obviously, you could lower the temperature of the Pod 2 or the Pod 3 if needed, but I would describe that the temperature you feel with the Dock Pro is more intense. The only real downside to the 8 sleep devices is that you're not able to control them manually. You have to control them through the app. And with the Dock Pro, you are able to control it through the app and manually. The 8 Sleep app feels more robust, but I have encountered more bugs. But this also might be because I've explored the app more because you have to use it when you use the device. Now there are some navigational pieces that I find to be a little bit confusing, but overall it's a pretty easy to use app. And I do like that you can access a bunch of different metrics. The metrics that you're able to see for free are very easy to navigate. It's a good user experience. But there's some other capabilities that are behind a paywall that I honestly haven't explored. Now all of the metrics that the Doc Pro provides are behind a paywall. I haven't explored that either, but the app itself is simple and to the point but I have encountered some issues when trying to create a temperature schedule. And as far as setting up these temperature schedules, the Dock Pro allows you to customize exactly what time you want the temperature to change throughout the night. And it seems like you can add as many changes as you want, whereas the 8 Sleep, you're only able to choose between four different times throughout the night where the temperature can change. The Pod 2, the Pod 3, and the Dock Pro all have a warm awake feature. I personally like this feature more with the 8 sleep devices, mainly because in the app you're able to customize exactly what time and exactly what temperature you want the bed to warm up to. But with the Doc Pro app, if you enable the warm awake feature, it'll just continuously heat up the bed when it's time for you to wake up and you have to turn it off to get it to stop. So the bed can get really hot and really uncomfortable. It's just not a pleasant way to wake up. All you have to do to fix this is add another temperature adjustment, but it would just be nice to not have to go through that extra step. But both 8 sleep devices have another wake up feature which vibrates the bed, and I know that sounds kind of weird, but you can control the intensity of the vibration and it's a really gentle way to wake up. I would say it kind of feels like having a phone vibrate underneath your mattress. Let's start with the Pod 2 and the Pod 3. Basically, you just need to refill the water tank every two to three months, depending on your use. I have found that I have to refill the Dock Pro more frequently, but I also think that's because the water tank itself is smaller. Now, the Dock Pro is a little more involved, uh, like significantly more involved, but basically they suggest that once a month you disconnect the Dock Pro, drain it, and refill it with distilled water and their cleaning solution that they sell on their website. Semi-annually, you can take the mattress cover off the bed and drain drain it in the bathtub, the shower, whatever is more convenient, plug it back in, refill it with water, the distilled water, of course, always distilled water if you haven't picked up on that, and the cleaning solution, of course. Real quick, I need to mention something that is very important and that is not talked about ever. I don't know why. I didn't talk about it either because I had to learn the hard way. If you have any sort of water-based cooling device, I strongly recommend putting some sort of plastic something underneath it 
just in case. Several months ago, my husband's Doc Pro leaked and it got all over the carpet. Thankfully, we caught it when we did because it would have been just like this nasty, moldy mess but we learned our lesson. So just take that extra step and put a plastic something underneath any of these devices, especially if you are on carpet. The Pod 2, the Pod 3, and the Doc Pro are all phenomenal products. And I honestly don't think you could go wrong with any one of them. I think with 8 Sleep, it just feels a little more luxurious. You know, like the, the packaging is really nice and the robustness of the app and the metrics, you have all of that. The way that the mattress cover fits on the bed and it just looks really nice. It's just, it's crisp. It's a nice experience. And of course it works. But the Doc Pro is still fabulous and I feel like their focus is really on function. Can we get this bed cooler or warmer depending on what the user wants? The answer is a resounding yes. This is all to say, you can't go wrong. If you are interested in purchasing one of these devices, I do have discount codes in the description down below. And of course you don't have to use them if you don't want to. But that was a ton of information. I am exhausted. I feel like I've answered everything that I would wanna know if I were going through this decision-making process today. And if I haven't, let me know, ask me questions in the comments and I'll do my best to answer as quickly as I can. And I wanna know what you think. Which of these devices would you choose?